Okay, good evening to you all. Uh, thank you very much for joining this uh, sixth uh, webinar of DMI for 2021. Uh, today, uh, we are very much uh, privileged to have uh, our invited speaker, uh, Sitila Dasanayaka. She's one of our uh, alumni from the department and currently serves as the director of uh, one of the clusters in UMES. So she's uh, one of our uh, industry advisory board uh, member as well. So she um, always uh, used to help us in numerous ways when we need her help. She always uh, willing to uh, cooperate with us and always give her valuable uh, precious time for our um, necessities. So today she uh, volunteered to help uh, us with uh, uh, having a guest speech on um, uh, mainly uh, on um, finding your role of becoming the best at it. So that's what she's going to talk. So she uh, talk will cover about different kind of careers in industry and their nature, uh, and then how you fit into those, and then understanding and playing fields and cultures as well as values and corporate well. Then understand the competition as uh, well as the. Uh, there are some other fights uh, you have to face and then how to break the gaps uh, in your professional career. So if you uh, look at uh, Sitila's profile, I think uh, already I have shared. So she has a vast experience in uh, many manufacturing disciplines, uh, manufacturing as well as software industry and then finances. So she's uh, involved with uh, textile and clothing, mainly on planning and operations, then lean manufacturing implementations, and even in innovation framework establishments, etc. Uh, and then technology development and commercializations, um, present engagement. And uh, even uh, before she joined the several industries, she involved with uh, enterprise resource planning, ERPs, and then retail telecom industries, IEFS uh, applications, consultancy, etc and then applications for textile industry, et cetera. And other than this involvement, she even served as management consultant for oil and gas industry um, while she was engaged with Ernest and Young some time back. So currently she serves as a director of uh, MAS Twineries. So with this uh, brief introduction, I would like to invite uh, Sitila to start uh, the session. Sitila, it's over to you. So thanks, Asela. Uh, so guys, this is a very informal session. Uh, please uh, ask me questions. It's up to you guys to ask questions in the middle or you can wait till the end and ask me questions. So uh, I know Asela gave kind of a background to me. So uh, we'll talk about this in detail uh, later. But what I see is all these experiences, the qualifications, if you really look at it, that is my background, but that's not me, right? So what I am is, is why, why, uh, why I get up every day to do, what is my purpose in life and what I am passionate about, what I want to achieve in my life. So those are the things that define me. So the experiences, qualifications, these are all background to you. So we will talk about personal branding later. So, uh, if I tell you who I am, yes, I have, uh, I might have a title, I might have uh, educational qualifications, I might have a name, but more than all that, what I think is what defines me is uh, what I want to do in life, right? What I'm passionate about. So that is why I have put a purpose here. So my purpose is I believe in technology and then I believe that technology and science can make this planet a better place. So there are so many debates about it. Uh, uh, if you go to social media, you might see so many different things. Uh, some you might, you might even pick fights and you might decide to debate on this. Some you might not. So, so it's uh, what defines you and what you're passionate about matters a lot to your career. And I believe to career and to your life. So um, I know you guys are at the verge of stepping into this corporate world. Uh, it might be so I'm going to talk to you about these things. Uh, when we say corporate world, it might not be exactly a corporate, right? So one thing that I wanted to touch upon is uh, 
to to say what kind of key projects that uh, we are working on these days uh, one uh, I, I just wanted to to give you kind of an uh, insight as to what uh, what we do also so that maybe i can make my credibility a bit better it is not about just sewing cutting and sewing when we say it's apparel industry so something that we are working on these days is to do a waste free technology that uh, you might have heard this is about plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition so we are working on that technology so that we can uh, give different functionalization to clothing it might be water repellents it might be fire retardancy or different kind of uh, functionality so it's kind of a tech platform that we are working on and this another tech platform that uh, we are working on where you can uh, make we call it an equal one that means the minimum order quantity is one or you can personalize a garment according to the the functionality the size the the look and such so that's another platform that uh, we are working on these days uh, so that is kind of current key projects of course uh, Maybe we can take it offline. You can always connect with me and talk about more as to what MAS Twinery does, because Twinery is MAS's innovation arm. And so what other uh, textile companies do in, in the country and such, we can take uh, some offline conversations. Of course, uh, I, I think I've shared my uh, information with you so that you, can, you guys can connect with me at any time. Do you have any questions? So can I uh, move on to move on? I think you can move on. Sukuna. Right. So guys always ask me questions. Uh, you, can, you, you can ask me questions because uh, I'm not going to set your papers or anything. So, so you can ask me any, any question at any point. Huh? Right. So uh, this is what I'm going to mainly cover today. Uh, so Asela, how much time do exactly we have? You can go for one hour, then we can have a QA and a session. All right, oh, that's great. So uh, even questions, of course, ask me at any point, as I told you. So let's uh, look at what kind of careers are waiting outside there, so that uh, we can you can think about what what the fit for you, and of course let's uh, understand about what kind of cultures out there, what kind of values in corporate world, what matters. It might be different to what you have experienced in the university. As, as well as in your school days uh, and such. So, and then uh, of course we have to understand the competition. It's not just you that's after uh, a particular role or a particular career. There are others who are, who are trying to grab these opportunities out there, right? So then uh, of course we have bridges. Uh, uh, we have to bridge these gaps. Uh, we have gaps, so we have to uh, bridge these gaps. So. 20 years ago, when I came to uh, industry, it was uh, the, the gaps were much, like it, they were vast than what you have today. For example, we didn't have, uh, like you guys said, we didn't have our personal computer 20 years ago, right? So it was uh, even then the knowledge about outside world, as well as the exposure on outside world was much less than what you have. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Yes, uh, it's fine. All right. Uh, so, so I'll move on to the first section. So what are these different kind of careers that you have in industry and what their nature is, right? So because it will help you to find your fit. Uh, so it's... Uh, what kind of industry landscape is out there? So of course there are academia versus industry as a, as a very huge um, categorization. So you can come to the industry or you can go in the academia. Uh, so in academia, I'm not, I'm not uh, very familiar with academia, of course, and you have enough and more support uh, to understand what academia is, looks like. So when you go to industry, there are service industries, there are non-service industries. So when you say a service industry, that you do not kind of manufacture anything tangible, but they're service, service providers. 
it could be banks, it could be consultancy. So, so service versus non-service, the cultures, values, the way they work would be very different. So if you want to see something tangible coming out of as a, as a output, that is what motivates you, service industry, you might not fit in there. Whereas uh, if you are if you are happy with your with your contribution in in different ways that somebody else is doing something with your contribution, then the service industry might uh, still you might fit in uh, service industry. So even uh, the CEB, if you look at, uh, the, I'm sure your uh, civil engineering friends would go to the water board uh, or the RDA and such. All these are service industries rather than uh, manufacturing or, or other industries. So if you look at then there's government, uh, the state-owned companies, where the culture and values are very different, how we are measured is different. Whereas for profit organizations like where I work, so they are profit based, right? So, so they want to make a profit. It's, it's not only to just give jobs to us. There are shareholders who have put money where they want to make profits. Uh, so there's no right and wrong place to work and making profit is not a bad thing unless there are profits made. You can't in reinvest in a company. So, uh, and then there are not-for-profit organizations like, for example, Red Cross, right? So there are not-for-profit organizations also that you can uh, work for. And then the other thing is you can become your own company owner. You can become an entrepreneur on your own. So uh, this is very prevalent in, in today's uh, context. There are, uh, you can start your own business very easily, easily now. Uh, so that is another uh, way of making your career. So uh, then there, if you look at, there are highly technical industries versus general in industries. So uh, if you look at, um, I worked for IFS, uh, for example, or I was a part of SAP team. They're very highly technical. You really have to understand the, the technicalities of how it works. So, it, the, uh, so it's very important to be very thorough with your technical knowledge and how to implement it, as well as uh, keeping abreast of what's happening in that space, even outside. However, in, in general industries, you might use your fundamentals more to build in and, and work and perform your role. So if you are a very, you want to go into the industry, but you like to do a lot of technical work rather than more general work, this highly technical industries might help. However, in general industries also, there are highly technical roles, right? So uh, in any of these industries, if you look at careers, it might be more people management kind of roles or task or operational management role. For example, project management and such would be task or operational management. Whereas if you are managing uh, production in a people intensive uh, role, it might be people management. It's more, uh, there are careers for people management. Oh, it could be just technical expertise. For example, in, in my teams, I have kind of two teams. They are very like, one is totally technical experts. So in that team who I have, if I just mention a few, there are chemists, there are uh, uh, scientists, material scientists, right? There are mechanical and mechatronics engineers. So they are technical experts. So, uh, Though I am in a management role, what, what I am managing these technical experts. And in these technical experts, for example, there's a, a, a artificial intelligence and machine learning unit. So, so those guys, when they come and explain me something, they explain me how they are doing mathematical modeling. So I have to remember my fundamentals so that I can relate to them, right? So, uh, so you, 
uh, you have to like think about you have to imagine these careers and see what you you would enjoy more so uh, in some companies so you have technical ladder versus management ladder so in sri lanka it might be a bit bit less however still there are technical ladders versus management ladders so when i say there are different ladders uh, you would think that that when even when i came to the industry i thought becoming a manager soon is is quite important but then what i what i realized was there are different ways to go up the career not just by title but uh, it might be impact versus hierarchy so even if you do not have a title or the title might be just a grade for example uh, i just mentioned you it i'll take the same example that i took about uh, artificial intelligence unit right so uh, uh i think i i hear a bit of noise if you have a question uh go ahead and ask the question so i i talk about i was talking about this example right so uh, in the artificial intelligence unit the unit is small because we uh we get external people to develop a lot where we do the architecture and the modeling side of it so there are only few people however the the person who's leading that team is at a general manager level right in a factory a general manager would have hundreds of people under general manager category so it's just a title but or i would call it a grade rather than the the right like, it doesn't matter that there are no 100 people under you but your impact that you do and the grade that you have is the same so uh, uh what you might want to to uh, think about is whether you would enjoy going up hierarchy having lot of people under you or it is the impact that you would enjoy so even if you don't have a huge team under you even if you do not you are not uh, responsible for a huge revenue or a sales number the impact that you would do might be much much more so that is something that you would have to think about uh, when you are thinking about your career so this is the title versus grade that i spoke to you about and then you have to choose what you like as well as what you are competent in so when i say choose what you like right uh, it's it's really important to do something that you love to do so uh, when you come out of out of uni you might think the biggest thing is to find a job as soon as possible and don't make it a race it's a uh, uh, i don't think it's wise to make it a race rather you should find something that you like to do what you will be passionate about doing uh, i am just telling my experience and what i believe in of course you can we can agree to disagree uh, however in the long run if you really look at long run it is not uh, the success depends on what on different things rather than having a title or a grade or a, a a bit bigger salary the success depends on if you are passionate about something if you like and you are competent in that unless you are passionate you will not improve your competency either your capability either if you are passionate about things uh, what i see in um we'll come to that a bit later in uh, our uh i'm not sure i said what you call it now we used to call it uh, industrial and production engineering so uh in university of peradeniya graduates what i see is we can go into fundamentals and and build things so uh so if you are passionate about things something you can go on that direction very easily and you can learn things and you can excel in that so you have to be confident in your in your that 
a kind of tech savviness rather than being an expert in materials so or expert in electronics, for example, you are very tech savvy. When you come out, you can go to any industry and understand fundamentals and then apply your knowledge to bring in solutions. So that is a strength that you have that is being given through your uh, curriculum and given through your degree. So, so uh, see what you are passionate about and then go after it. It will bring you more success than going after quick, uh, quick making a quick buck or going up the management ladder fast. So if you forget everything I spoke about now, but still I want you to remember just two things. That is what just came up on screen. So there's this, I'm sure in social media and all that you have seen this a lot. They ask this question, should you work for a company or should you work for a boss, right? I would say none, don't work for a company, don't work for a boss, work for a course. What is your course? What, do you, what is your purpose? What do you enjoy? Work for a course company or boss or all that are enablers or tools for you to achieve your course in life, what you want to achieve in career. Uh, of course, you have to be loyal to your company. You have to uh, have common goals so that the company wins when you win. When you work well, the company uh, thrives and when company thrives, you will achieve your goals. That is That should happen, but then, you have to work for a course, then that, that's what matters and that will uh, motivate you and that motivation is sustained. And then the other thing that you have to remember is it's okay to explore and change, right? It's okay to go to government or go to a technical uh, career or a job or a role and then later change into a more management role, for example. It's okay to go for a service industry and then say, no, I'm not happy with service, working on service industry, so I want to change my career. So it's okay to explore and change. So I would call failure is doing something that you don't like for material benefits. Like when I go to the next reunion, I can say I'm this much. I'm my my, I don't know, my package is like this, my title is like this. So these kind of material benefits are very short lived. And so failure is doing something that you don't like in the long run. And being unhappy is a, is a failure. Whereas changing careers and exploring things uh, would be a much better option. So if you forget all about these career ladders and what kind of industries out there, two things that you should remember, I think is, work for a course, find a career for a course, and then don't uh, be afraid to explore. Are there any questions or can I move on? Right, so uh, silence I take as uh, no questions and I'm gonna move on. So let's uh, talk a bit about the cultures and values in corporate world, right? So if you look at what a culture is, it's a culture is a collection of values and expectations and of course practices to guide how we behave. It might be uh, a new definition that you see, but uh, you might need some time to digest, but, but I'm gonna move on. So, so in, a, in an organization, whether it's non -for, not for profit or service or government or whatever that organization, most of this culture depends on who their customer is, to who they serve, right? And what this organization make become successful if they have what kind of culture they would be successful. And of course, how they are funded, right? So uh, depending on these factors, the culture is a bit different. Uh, for example, simply take military, right? Military is very hierarchical. There's very less uh, opportunity or freedom to create, to be creative, right? And you have to just follow orders because 
they're serving a particular customer, they're funded in a different way. And then what makes them successful depends on taking decisions very centrally at one point and then executing. Whereas in a company like ours, it's the, the creativity plays a big, very big role and everybody is encouraged to be creative. Unless it's a, it's a day-to-day -day routine thing that you do in production, how to make a particular product, maybe there's a standardized way. But even in that, people are encouraged even team members are encouraged to come up with new ways of doing it to improve quality, maybe to improve efficiency. So you are still able to create. So, uh, so that is, that's because of what we, what we believe success is, is different, right? Uh, so you, you should be able to kind of imagine also to a certain extent what kind of cultures you'd like to work in. There are no right or wrong answers here, right? Uh, we have to remember that like university kind of culture is not in outside in, in corporate or even state-owned organizations. The culture is very different. So uh, if we look at in university, Actually, we had the same kind of people around us, right? When we speak, when we behave, we had the same wavelength. So people would understand us very easily they, because they can relate to you. They can resonate with your behavior, your thinking and all that. However, when you go to go outside, it's a diverse pool of people. They come from different backgrounds. They are, they are knowledge, their exposure is different. They are, uh, I might say that even their IQ is different as well as their EQ is different, right? So when you are going, when you are going looking for jobs, study the corporate culture of if you are going and applying for a company, if you want to join a company, study that culture and see whether you would like to work there right so there are uh, you can of course as i said that you can go online and find a lot about the corporate culture not only from the corporate website but you can look at who who are the uh, figures in those uh, corporates whether they are government or non government you can go online and find a lot you can uh, of course reach out to us like uh, who who are your alumni and then uh, check what what kind of corporates these are so that you can study it a, a bit more before you jump in like you can test the waters before you jump into the water right so so that is uh, that is something that i wanted to to mention so again if you forget all about these cultures and such that i talked about all this time there are two things that i would say you should remember in any culture Whatever the culture in any company that you join, avoid talking politics and religion in office, right? It is something that I don't think it's, it's, it's a good thing to talk about these things. These are things to talk with your friends rather than with your colleagues. And always keep open mind, be broad minded. Remember that not everyone is like you and it doesn't have to be that everyone, to be like you, right? So when it's a corporate, of course, corporates need different kind of people to be successful. So be broad-minded and don't hesitate to take challenges. So in, in any culture, these, these two things are kind of a must. So I'm going to move on to the next section uh, if you don't have any questions. I think you can ask one or two questions, otherwise uh, at the end there will be many, so better to ask now so that uh, speak also can you know, elaborate further things, so better to ask now questions.
So I would move into this, uh, this maybe you want to ask all the questions at the end. Uh, so uh, who are the competitors? So I would, this is very vast, vast thing to talk about, a very vast, broad uh, topic. So I would just concentrate on kind of engineers, right? So if you look at who are your competitors, of course, there are other uh, students coming out of other universities, as well as there are people who have worked in other industries and, and maybe, sorry, applying to the same job that you are applying. So then you have to understand what your differentiation, what are you bringing to the table? So as I told you before, something that I see with uh, Pera than engineering graduates, we are not being trained to do a vocation, right? It's not like an NDT guy or a, uh, somebody coming from a technical college that has been trained to do a certain one thing. So, uh, so your uh, exposure to different areas is much more. And the, I believe that you can go into fundamentals and build things and apply your knowledge much better than most of the other engineering graduates that we see. So, so that, is, that might be your differentiation, but please, you guys are individuals. I can't just put all of us into one bucket. So you might have your individual differentiations as well. So you have to know what, your, what differentiates you so that uh, you can say, this is how I can add more value, right? So it, you do not have to be better than everything, right? You don't have to be better in your technical knowledge, uh, your mm, communication, your looks, uh, uh, how you... Uh, how, how much you know about outside world, about new texts and such. You don't have to be better than them in everything, but then you have to have some differentiations and you should be able to show these differentiations. So uh, I'm just going to talk through some simple tips to face interviews, right? Some I have uh, learned the hard way, uh, some uh, that I interview so many people, uh, uh, who, because we are very selective in um, taking people as technology entrepreneurs to innovation organizations. So we uh, uh, interview a lot of people. So I meet so many people who have worked in Sri Lanka, worked abroad, who have got PhDs outside and coming back to Sri Lanka, um, et cetera. So uh, something is, please prepare before you go to an interview. Just don't walk into interviews. It doesn't work anymore, right? So even uh, in our organizations, HR teams look at your profiles on LinkedIn and such, even before you come to an interview. So you also have to prepare very well, study that organization, right? And uh, if you have anything that you want to ask before, even before coming to the, the interview, right? Ask those questions from the caller who ask, who talk to you and say, come at this time for an interview, it most, probably from the, the HR or an agent who's uh, recruiting on behalf of an organization. But if there are questions that you want to ask before coming to an interview, for example, like, what is the kind of attire that you, uh, that you think we should come in? Those kind of questions, ask those questions. Like, do they have, do you have parking? Uh, where are exactly the places, right? Ask those questions so that you are not uh, taken off guard or surprised when you, when you come in. Mm. Uh, for, if you do not ask these questions, take a jacket with you guys, take a, a jacket and a tie with you and go in long sleeves if you can, so that you can take, you, you don't have, you can look, at, look around or talk to the HR person before going into the interview room and you can decide to not to wear the jacket for example, in, in, in our organization, in MS Twinery, if somebody comes in a jacket, we like, we say, because this is very casual, you, this thing, but then don't go in t-shirts unless it's, you are very sure that it's, a, it's a very casual, right? So, uh, so girls, unless it's a state-owned organization, don't go in saris. It's, uh, it's, it's just that perception. So don't go in anything shiny. Right? Uh, if you have very punk hairstyles, 
that's okay as long as they are innovation organizations where, or some kind of software organization. Uh, other, otherwise, uh, it might be good to guys, it might be good to take off your rings, right? If your earrings and such, if you have, uh, uh, don't go in like pointy shiny shoes and such uh, guys. So these are like some tips. You have to dress properly. It is not that you have to go in, in like as if you are dressed for a kind of an event or a wedding like that, but just, just have some, because it's still in Sri Lankan uh, organization, this still matters, right? And uh, always be on time and, and go confident, be confident. Uh, whatever happens, be confident, right? Uh, I'm not saying to be arrogant. There's a fine line between being confident and being arrogant. Don't be arrogant, but please be confident. Then uh, when you are introducing yourself, always in all these interviews, they ask you to intro introduce yourself, right? Don't just talk about, as I started earlier, just don't tell your name, your qualification, uh, and your uh, final year project. Don't just talk about those. But talk about what motivates you, what is your passion, what defines you. These things are these things matter, right? And then all most probably they would ask you why they should hire you. So you have to be prepared to answer this question. That's why it's very important to study the organization, and uh, you have to be you have to be prepared with these answers, right? And ask the questions that matter to. You also ask questions like in an interview, uh, unless it's a very hierarchical organization, we always ask, is, are there any questions that you want to ask us? So ask these questions and from those questions, you can, it's not to show off your knowledge, of course, but then you can influence the uh, interviewer asking questions also. So it's, uh, it's remember that. And, uh, don't try to give answers that you think that they want to hear. That's kind of, that will trip you actually. So uh, don't, don't, don't try to, because, uh, because, because I know that I feel that if somebody is trying to please me with answers that they think that I want to hear and, and telling me things that I want to hear rather than what they feel, because most of these people who interview you have sat to hundreds of interviews and, and they have uh, recruited wrong people, learned uh, things, so they know. So don't try to be a fake, be yourself, right? And being good in languages always help, right? So this is something really important. May mostly for our local graduates, you have to be very good in English not to become, not to have an accent or anything, but to be a good communicator. As technical people, we are not very good at articulating, putting across our thoughts. This uh, communication part, we are not very good at, even in our mother tongue, right? So this is, you have to learn, you have to be good in English, guys, so that you can communicate well. I think I have it later in another slide also. And it is never too late. If you're not good at it now, go learn. Because if you really look at the stupidest person in the US, right? The utmost idiot in the UK, they speak English. So, so it is not difficult to learn the language, right? So I'm sure you are good at communicating in English when you answer your papers in technical stuff. But it is very important to have conversations, to understand others and uh, communicate in general. So please, whether it's a state-owned state organization or a corporate or a multinational like us, it's, it's really important. I can't stress enough. Sometimes I see that in some local universities in our time, I'm talking about like 20 years ago, of course, it was uh, in, in some 
some circles it was looked down upon if you are trying to speak in english and such if you think that english is important it was kind of looked down upon but not only english if you know languages it always helped right so uh, so i wanted to say this however if you are being interviewed for a technical uh, technical role we sometimes stay okay even in singhal explain us that's okay uh, however it helps uh, helps in it's never too late to learn a language so please uh, please think about this do you have any questions about interviews yes pramod uh, no, i have a question about uh, not a interview but mm -hmm. uh, uh, about uh, what is the uh, what is the difference between uh, our peradini uh, graduates and uh, uh, university of morotua or runa uh, i mean uh, in the current situation uh, there are more people uh, like morotua uh, uh, go beyond uh, to us uh, past das uh, so what what is the main reason uh, do you think so promote what i see is morotua guys has a lot more exposure to industry than than peradeniya guys so when they uh, when when they go into their uh, industrial training for example right they they pick and choose where to go and all that and they talk to their alumni and they have their they, they had they network much more than peradeniya guys maybe because peradeni is physically distant from the industry where the industry is mostly based in i don't know in the western province maybe that's the reason but if you look at peradeniya guys what i see there are, there are goods i wouldn't call bads but there are differences they are good at the first two three years they might be good at because they kind of very specialized however when it comes to as i told you earlier when there is a problem that you had to go into fundamentals and apply your knowledge i see peradeni guys are uh, better however in communication in confidence basically selling themselves they are they are to be honest they are better if i look at uh, foreign graduates they are even better right they might not even know as much as you do their knowledge might be less but then how they project it how they articulate is is much better so that's why i am saying that communication is really important uh, so so that is something that that uh, we have to build pramod did i answer your question yes ma'am thank you anyone else then i have a question yes isro uh, my question is about the studying the organization so okay. what are the specifics that you need to study when before going for an interview uh basically what business they are in right that's uh, that's very important uh so uh are they so so that's a given no? what business they are in you should understand so then you can say why you fit their organization it's, it's very uh, easy to answer and then again as i told you what the culture is like right and what their customer base what they have done earlier and uh, if they have kind of won awards and such for a particular uh, particular thing so these kind of things are important so so that uh, you can uh, relate your answers to that organization when you answer it so did i answer your question yes ma'am understood thank you very much give me a second i'm just going to plug in my computer any other questions go ahead and ask
Uh, madam, I have one question. So when we go to interviews, they might ask about our salary expectations. So as right. a fresh okay. undergraduate, so what sort of an answer we should do? Good question. So uh, that is again something that that you should actually uh, kind of uh, what do you call it? study a bit more before you you before you go. Uh, if you have anybody in the organization that you can ask about what kind of uh, uh, salary rates are going on. Yeah, for example, if it's a if a state auto state owned organization, it might be very easy to understand. So, uh, if it's a very reputed company, most probably they already have scales. They have a salary scales according to okay for this level. This is the kind of salary range, right? So, uh, you might answer when it it's uh, you can actually ask them. If you if you did not know what the range and uh, for example when we joined this company we had uh, seniors who were working for this company and then we asked them and we knew the rates so when we came we we were like when we were asked we were playing in in that range however if you do not know what you can answer is also sorry I didn't catch your name what you can answer is I am sure like a very reputed company like yours have like salary scales. So uh, can you tell me to the position that you, are, you would hire me if you are hiring me, what is that salary scale is like? You can ask that, it might fly, it might not fly. They might say, no, I'm not going to tell you the scale. You tell me how much you need. Then always, if that particular company, you don't know what the scale is, just check with kind of similar companies, right? Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Right, so I'll move on. If you still have questions on even on this around this, uh, do ask me later. So then we come to like how to bridge these gaps, right? So, uh, so first thing I was talking about is I thought I'd talk to you about personal branding. So uh, you all are unique individuals, right? So you have to portray that. You have to portray that in a sense, you have to show this. So uh, the online presence is, is really important. So uh, if you already do not have, please go ahead and make your LinkedIn profile. One thing is uh, uh, do not look at, for example, some, somebody like my LinkedIn profile and do something like that. Go check again online, there are tips to how you can make your online uh, LinkedIn profile better, how you can make it that more recruiters and more companies see your profile in their searches. So there are tips. So go study it because why I'm saying is don't look at my LinkedIn profile or Dr. Asela's uh, profile and do something like that because we are not in your position, right? So uh, basically I'm not, thinking about changing my job anytime soon. So I might uh, not have a, have a uh, profile that, that you should have. So manage your online profile. And, uh, and it's important because as I told you, it's like uh, HR people would uh, look at your profile uh, even before you come to the interview. And in the other social media, it is also important but it doesn't mean that you have to be an, I don't know, in style or so that you have so many followers and such, right? Other social media, it's best if you can actually have friends because you should be able to be free, right? On Facebook or on Insta also, you should be able to be free. So uh, 
I'm not saying be careful, but then there are, there are some stuff that you might want to think about how you portray yourself. However, most of the times it's LinkedIn that uh, companies would look at uh, because other social media companies like uh, big companies, of course, understand that they are very personal, right? So, but making your personal branding and then walking, talk, walking your talk is, is really important. Mm. Are there any questions uh, around this? Right, I'll move on to technical skills. So in, when you say technical skills, to be honest, guys, you have to be good in your sheet. Like you should know your, what your, your discipline, you should be really good at your discipline, right? So you should be knowledgeable about, not only about what you learned, but related current trends, new technologies that's coming out. And you should have your own opinions as to pros and cons. For example, um, autonomous vehicles, right? Do you have, uh, you, you should have some opinion and as to, as to why, whether you like Elon Musk or not, and why. You might say, no, I, am, I like him for democratizing, um, I don't know, batteries, but I don't like much him trying to go to space. So, so this is not my opinion, I'm just telling you that you have to have some opinions like that, because most probably, because you are coming from engineering backgrounds, uh, you would be asked questions like, okay, what excites you, right? What kind of tech excites you and what do you think that would change the world in the future? So these kind of things you should, you should know and then and you have to be knowledgeable about these things, right? And uh, you, you should have the, I'm sure you have the ability, but you should have some willingness to learn new things. Because as I earlier said, you are not trained to do a vocation. Uh, so when you when we come to the industry, guys, we don't know about jack about the industry that we are getting into most of the times, most probably, right? So whereas I think Pramod asked this question earlier, for example, people coming from Moro to a textile, they already know about textile. But I am coming from Peradenia, I didn't know about textile, right? Um, so it, it should, but it is not a problem, but we have learned about materials. We have learned about uh, material strength, material topology, how these things change, how the structures would work. You know that. So applying that knowledge to a textile, to a, is, is much, actually it's easy. It's, it's not difficult. So you just, if you are going for an interview, for a textile company, it's just like two, three hours things. And then this kind of things will not be actually tested in, in an interview, most probably, whether you know the exact technicalities. But it, it's if you really want to, to, if you are going for a very technical job, it's something that you can actually learn, learn pretty fast because actually knowledge is out there uh, online now about anything if you really look at it, right? So it's very important that you know the fundamentals and how to apply them. And uh, next point about vocation, I'm not going to, to talk about it because I stress this enough, I think. And if you really look at it, if you are going to not a very technical career, but more kind of a general career, common sense is 90% of the things that you do is actually on common sense. And common sense always prevails. So uh, you have to know, have your technical skills, but please don't uh, undermine, uh, undermine that how your IQ is IQ as well as your EQ. Do we have any questions on this slide? Excuse me, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Um, madam, 
when we go to our first job, uh, first interview, yeah, sometimes we have to uh, change jobs after that job. So is it okay if we tell that to our, we are here for experience or something to the uh, interview board? If I were you, Binara, I I wouldn't say I'm going to leave in three months or something, right? Because when you're going for the interview, you might actually, you might not know unless you are already registered to do a, I don't know, MBA or a PhD and it's starting after summer in September and you are coming for an interview in January for eight months, right? So uh, unless it's something like that, to be honest, I wouldn't, not because that I want to hide it, because I also might not know when you join a company, uh, you would actually, you think that I'm here only for this experience, but once you join, you it might open up other opportunities for you. So for example, when I joined this company, I joined as a, to planning and operations, right? Uh, however, when there were opportunities, challenges presented to implement lean manufacturing system, I moved to that. And then there's a, a SAP implementation, I moved to that. So there are so many lateral career changes as well. So, so I wouldn't say that I'm going to be here only for three months. However, uh, on the other side, if if the company is looking for a short term spell and you are sure that you can, I'm sure we all are sure that when we are applying that we can do that job, right? So, so maybe you want to say, try me for six months, take me on contract for six months or 12 months and I'll show you that I can do the job well. That kind of answers, Binara, is, is I, I promote that kind of answers. But uh, to be very honest at the first interview itself saying I would not stay here. I don't think even we know that we are going to leave in three months. Thank you. Uh, and it is something, something that I, I realized all of you guys like to talk to me like madam. But for example, this is where the culture piece come in. In our company, even to the, the chairman, who's, uh, who's like Deshamanya and one, one of the richest people in the country and a very, uh, what call, very respectable person, we still call him by his first name, right? So, uh, so those are the small points in, in interviews. It's okay to call sir, madam, because you didn't know that. But these are the things that that come in that culture piece. So, uh, so, so we, we call everybody by first name. It's first name basis and you can challenge everyone else, anyone also. Uh, so so it's, it's good to know that kind of culture when you're going for interviews. It's just that it came to my mind because of the, the way you were addressing it. Go ahead. Um, Sitil, I have a question as well. Okay. So, uh, first of all, it was a great uh, presentation so far. It was very interesting. So, thank you for that. And uh, my question is regarding personal branding. So, mm -hmm. you highlighted that, you know, we need to uh, show that we are unique, right? And, uh, yeah, true. We can create a LinkedIn profile and boost our online presence. But then again, that doesn't mean we would be, I mean, that would not highlight our uniqueness. So what, like, how would you suggest us to create a unique brand? So uh, it comes in, uh, in different forms. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch your name. I'm uh, Rajiv. So, so Rajiv, it's, it's uh, you have to project this, portray this when you go to the interview walls, right? So for example, if your uniqueness come in different aspects, with your experience as well as maybe uh, maybe you are saying I'm really passionate about uh, I don't know saving forests for example right so 
So that that is part of that might be part of your personal brand. So if it when when they talk about what 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 uh, what's interesting outside in the world, you might talk about it. So so you enhance your you portray what your personal branding is, right? And then you say, say why should I hire you, right? So when they say why should I hire you, then you have to to portray what you stand for. So that's where your personal branding would come out, right? And uh, if say your uh, say you have your own, so for example, I was uh, interviewing some people who had who had their own kind of uh, businesses. So they were online. One guy was having a a socks business, and and he's very passionate about it, and he's passionate about kind of Sri Lankan art. So in all his socks, what goes is, that's a signature that's going in the sock, right? So that is kind of his personal brand. He has a personal touch in everything. So when you go to an interview or when you write your uh, profile and the things that you post in your LinkedIn profile, so all that shows your personal branding, right? So, uh, for example, say say you are you are saying I I value simplicity so much, right? And I value simplicity so much, and then I am more about personal expression rather than brand oriented. You can't say that wearing, uh, let's say, a Nike shoe and all branded stuff. You are wearing all branded stuff, and you are saying. I'm more about simplicity and self-expression, for example. So, so there are different ways that you can portray uh, till you meet in person or join a company, how you can portray that is through uh, online presence. That's why Rajiv, I talked about online presence more. However, when you are, uh, after you joining a company, there are so many different ways that you can show your uniqueness and your uh, personal branding, right? It's about what, uh, what you do outside, outside of work, right? Uh, so, uh, so all that would matter to your personal branding. Uh, for example, if you are very uh, passionate about sports and fitness, of course, then first you should look sporty and, and fit, right? And then, uh, and then you would encourage others to be fit, right? Others to be fit, you would encourage others uh, in different ways, you would help others. So then, then now even in our organization, though it's a, like a, now it's a, I think 100,000 people organization, but then there are people that we know who are, are uh, very passionate about ocean, who are very passionate about, uh, about uh, uh, what do you call that, the, the environment or, or forests. We know who is passionate about running. So, so that personal branding you build over time once you join an organization, but before you join an organization, because he's a very career oriented, uh, talk i'm narrowing it down to this that online presence is important rajiv did i answer your question yes it is. thank you thanks okay ma'am uh, aspects you may mention like industry culture uh, balance between management and technicality uh, yeah. We really need some uh, exploring and that, that might need some time to understand what, what we re really want, right? So yes. uh, do, do, do you have any advices regarding uh, picking the first role or the organization? So should, should we wait to find a role and organization that suits us or is it okay uh, to uh, get into a job as soon as possible and then 
exploring and browsing what we really want so uh, the, the question is when you go in as soon as possible what happens is it might have only like two three roles so you might not be able to even explore so if you want to explore more i would rather become a small fish in a bigger pond first and then explore more because the pond is larger there's so much to explore right if i jump in at the first instance that i get if it, good that if it is a like a, a, a larger organization that you can explore more however uh, you have to if you are if you are not even if you are clear if you want to explore more and see how it how what would suit me well and what would i be what is out there up for grabs so if you want to do that more i would rather say join a organization that ha has that variety right if you join uh, i'm not sure whether your uh, this department's people join it like water board might not be the right place to explore a lot of uh, variety in careers right uh, if you join uh, virtusa it might not be this thing but if you join uh, trellebog it might be a place that you can uh, explore more thank you ma'am that that uh, yeah thank you thank you very much right so i'll move on to the next one next slide i think it's right so if you talk about soft skills and attitude right as i earlier said communication is very important so it's uh speaking writing of course reading i have missed it here and of course the body language right so your confidence your mm, it, it's very important the body language is also important so when you say communication you have to just uh, you can of course on youtube there's a lot of kind of material content out there uh, about body language something that you can you can explore and communication is very important that's why i said the languages are very important um, i'm not going to go into detail because we talked about it and of course it's important to dress well and to be healthy and to be well groomed so uh, when i say dress well and to be well groomed i am not saying that you have to look like models and such right it's not that it's it's uh, it's about uh, based on the culture of the organization how you dress so once you are once you join a company it's it's very easy to to look around right and uh, and these things it's uh, just changing our the way that we dress a bit is not kind of compromising our value system and such right so uh, so just look around and see how you how you want to to change a bit it it's, it's not going to hurt you and of course being healthy is very important so uh, for example uh, we used to to tell the 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 person who was who, there was this consultant who came to teach us one uh, he was i can't remember canadian or indian consultant came to teach us about lean manufacturing and the and the uh, the the person what was not that lean right and he didn't look healthy so so you know the so though we talk about inclusivity a lot when you are not healthy when you are this these things are all, it always counts and being well groomed always counts so i'm not saying when you well, well groomed that you have to have a cropped hair also all the time or you have to be clean shaven it's not that but you have to if you have long hair have it properly groomed right uh, for girls i am not saying that you have to have a weekly manicure and a pedicure and such but you have to show that you take care of yourself so though it is not talked about taking care of yourself portray it shows that 
first if you are take if you can't even take care of yourself how are you going to take care of others for example if you are going to be a team leader right how, if you can't take care of yourself how are you going to take care of others how are you take, going to take care of a business right so so these things are things that we don't talk about much like uh, i don't know when you are staying at akbar hall or sangamita it doesn't really matter how you walk across the road from akbar hall to the the lecture hall right but it's it's not uh, it's not the same in corporate so these things that uh, it they matter right and again i talked about to be confident but not to be arrogant so uh, so i see sometimes irrespective of uh, whether they are local graduates or foreign graduates sometimes we see that uh, some people come with an arrogance saying that they have uh, we have we are learned right we are educated people we have these degrees and we are engineers so uh, so yes we are good at that so be confident about it however don't become arrogant when i say arrogant it's like putting others down is you should never do that even the 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 best business person in in your organization might not understand your logic sometimes but don't be arrogant about what you know because the other person also know uh in other areas they know me much more than we do right so uh, be confident but don't be arrogant and uh, be knowledgeable be knowledgeable about about your discipline and of course the other things as well whatever you you like to know about uh, but don't be narrow minded so uh, so for example uh, to solve a problem there might be more than one way of solving a problem right uh, so these are these are the things that so you why i'm saying not, not to be narrow minded others might bring in solutions others might propose you solutions that my that is not the way that you think that you can solve the problem so they might be technicians they might not have as good as qualifications like you do but then be open minded be knowledgeable but don't be narrow minded thinking that what i think is the the right answer all the time maybe both answers are right right so so don't be narrow minded uh it's something that uh, because we are learned and ed educated uh, we might think that that we know the best but uh, but but always uh make sure that that you listen to others and take the others ideas to improve your things as well and uh, the the other thing is don't feel entitled right um, so you have to of course show what you can do and you have to show your potential what you can do in the future you have to talk about your potential but uh, don't feel entitled because uh, if you really look at it in uh, in organizations you will be treated for for your contribution not based on how long you have studied what qualifications you have or what uh, what title you have and such you will be rewarded uh, for 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 your contribution what you bring into the table what value you add so we should not be feeling entitled because we have a qualification it's like i i am not going to sugar coat it guys it's you have to show what you can do just we can't hide behind our qualifications we have to show what we can do so so uh, don't feel entitled show what you can do right and it is very important to make networks inside and outside your organization so when i say network i am not saying that you have to drink with all the colleagues every day na every night or so of course if you want to drink you can drink but uh, it's uh, it's not when i'm saying it's networking it's uh, it's about knowing what others do it always helps 
right? And what happens in the industry outside? For example, I would take an example what I'm familiar with. I am in textile industry. And uh, there are other players in the country who are like us. So I'm at MAS, whereas Hydromony is a good, big player, Brandix is a good player. So I have networks within different organizations. Sometimes we even work together on some projects, right? So your organization, your industry, as well as outside your industry, have your networks. It matters. It is something that we are not very good at as technical people, but these networks matter because it, uh, it widens your horizons uh, from knowledge aspects, as well as when you need something done, uh, they, are, they are very important. Uh, so keep your uh, networks that you have already created in the, in the university, keep those networks and build your networks. And, and you have to relate to others. So uh, this again, you might call it a part of a subset of this making networks also. You have to show genuine interest. Once you uh, join an organization, you have to show genuine interest in what others do. We can't be just stay inside our cocoon and say, okay, I am the industrial engineer here. I will only look after the I don't know, boilers and this, this particular mechanical equipment, and that's my job. So I don't give shit what happens on, on Salesforce or whatever, whatever happens in others. I'm not. So, so, so that would not take you far. You can be that. There's no right or wrong about it. You can be that, but uh, it wouldn't take, take, you, take you far. Uh, but but it, it, it is a choice. But uh, if you want to, become much more than the engineer, the engineer who looks after a certain area, if you want to be more than that, uh, that you, you have to show genuine interest and relate to others. For example, if you look at, uh, look at big companies in the globally uh, well-performing companies, just look at most of these CEOs are engineers, not finance people or sales people, right? starting from Steve Jobs, for example. These guys are engineers. Uh, so uh, there's, there's no this thing saying that, that, that you can't go to this general management. You can, but then you have to develop more than the technical skills if you want to do that. And of course, uh, something that you might not have talked about, you have not, uh, heard about is confidentiality in work and other work ethics. So for example, if you work, let's say somebody asked this question. So you are in three months in one company and then you are going to an interview for another company, right? So there they might ask the work that you did. However, if you were in projects that you think that you should not divulge information about, you can of course say, sorry, they are confidential. I can't, I can you would, you, I'm sure you understand they are confidential, so I can't uh, talk about those projects that what I did. But in general, I can tell you this, 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 but these technicalities, I can't divulge. So, uh, so, so, and uh, so, so these kind of things, you have to be, be careful when you are switching jobs and such, or when you are talking to your friends about the company that you are working. Like, now I, you might, you might have noticed that the two projects that I was talking about, I gave like very high level this thing. So I didn't go into details because there are things that confidential that we do not divulge. But to, so, so you might be, when you do your first job, for example, you might be really, uh, what do you call, uh, tempted to talk about the work you do because you are so passionate, you are interested and you want to talk to your friends about it. But, but there, there might be work ethics regarding those confidentiality about, about, uh, around it that you should not talk about them. So, uh, so we have instances that, that we had to let go of some people just because they breached confidentiality, right? So, so keep that in mind. Uh, it is not that 
you would sign a confidentiality agreement most probably in most of the companies you would sign the confidentiality clause in your when you join the company in the letter of what do you call agreement that you employment the letter of employment or so that agreement you would when you sign it there are confidentiality clauses in most of the companies don't think it is just in paper and forget it uh, it might come to haunt you later and of course uh, don't be scared to join big organizations it's uh, there's nothing to be scared of uh, go for it and uh, and don't be scared to sit with the ceo for example over lunch don't be scared to talk to them uh, it's it, it, these things that uh, i know in university i know in, uh, i don't know whether it's the, still the same but in my time uh, our seniors some of our seniors used to tell us not to not to get noticed to lecturers and uh, not to get uh, notice so don't talk to lecturers don't go to them to ask questions and such but but please don't take if you still have that please don't take those practices uh, to organizations unless there are these ministries and such that you are not supposed to talk to the minister and the big shots in all the the private organizations please uh, don't there are no goals in goes in in corporate world so uh, so don't be shy to uh, talk to big shots in organizations uh, you have to it's good to be noticed for the right reasons right it's good to be noticed uh, the right reasons um, and if you forget all these soft skills and attitude there's one thing that you wa i want you to remember the positive attitude matters more than any of these skills so uh, so what is this uh, in this it's cartoon you have this chow chow that nah, no this is not going to work always is no this is not going to work that kind of attitude again will not take you far so more than any soft skill your attitude matters uh, so most of these skills you can learn but what i have seen is it's very difficult to change the attitude of a person so can do attitude having that positive attitude matters a lot so if you forget about any of these skills just remember that attitude matters are there any questions Um, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so I've, uh, this is something I've faced uh, in the past and also some people have advised me. Mm -hmm. So I just want to get your opinion about it. So um, a lot of times uh, I've been asked to be careful when I speak up, I speak out about my opinion on something. Um, so like, I what I feel like is I don't think it you know speaking out my opinion really matters and it it should be something that I that should like you should do when it comes to your work environment. But what what do you think? Is it something you know um, sharing your opinion? How important is it? Um, um, when you say your opinion, opinion about what exactly? Um, about anything. Sometimes. Uh, uh let it be a group work um so this is still about work right the, yeah the this is still time. still about work yes right so what i think i'm sorry i couldn't catch your name uh i'm smritya right so uh when you say i think it's more about how we package our opinion so as technical people as engineers we think logic speaks to everyone right we think people will understand logic some but i think it's not it's not true so so logic always doesn't make sense to everyone though it should right so this again something that i also learned the hard way sometimes the logic doesn't work you have to you have to uh, wrap it in a different way you have to sometimes 
be gentle on your delivery. Sometimes you have to dumb it down and build your case, right? Because there's the things that, that we have seen every day. We, we do not build it from, from the, the from, we don't dumb it down. We talk at a very high level. It goes beyond others' heads. They don't understand. So that is, if you are talking the logic and you have to present your case, the when we, because we want to put our opinion fast as possible, because we don't want to take others time also, right? We sometimes, so we just put our opinion at our level, which might not be understood by others, right? Uh, so that is one. And the other thing is you might have to tell the story rather than rather than be very logical. You might have to be a bit diplomatic in some case. If you want to put not just your opinion, you want to get kind of approval and you want to bring a bigger thing, what I see is sometimes you have to make some of the participants understand what you're going to present, what you're going to talk about in the bigger forum a bit earlier. We call it, we, uh, in Dean Manufacturing System, we call it Nemavashi. You make your field first before putting the seeds in the field, right? So sometimes this is not just in, one, in, a, in a small conversations, of course, you don't have to talk about it earlier. But in, in a bigger conversation, if you're going to put a proposal out there, if you, uh, so those things, it might be good to have some, some, how do you call, allies or friends in the conversation who understood you first and will support you in the, when you are proposing it is another way of doing that. So what I see mostly is that we do not dumb it down. We talk about in a very highly technical manner so that opinion is not even understood to, to agree with. And then I'm not sure whether you are asking this because, because you are a woman also. So sometimes in boardrooms or even, even group discussions, it's statistically proven that people listen less to women, right? So, uh, so that is again, you have to earn your respect. So for example, when I was a management consultant, I worked in the Middle East, right? Of course, not in Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't, uh, I've never gone there because I don't like to cover. I have worked in, in, in Dubai, in Qatar, and of course in, in Netherlands uh, under Ernst & Young. So in, in the Middle East, it was when you go in a South Asian woman, who would listen to South Asian woman in the Middle East, right? Because you are, even if you are a consultant, how they, how Middle Eastern people have in their mind is their their maids are from Sri Lanka and India. They haven't met many management consultants from Sri Lanka, though they have some Indians, right? So, so sometimes you have to build it and earn the respect. So I was as a management consultant, I was giving consultancy to boards, right? So to to do that, yes, the first two or three times they might not. So sometimes you have to have like one-on-one -on -one meetings with them to, to build your and earn, earn respect. So then they would start listening to your opinion. So, so sometimes you have to prove yourself also. So, so there's no one answer to your question, how you can make others listen to your opinion. There, there are different ways of doing it. So just to, to wrap it up, I would say you might have to be diplomatic and kind of make, it, make, the, make your message a bit more gentler, right, is one. Number two, you might have not to be, you can't be highly technical. You might want to dumb it down so that you build your case. Number three, you might have to do some name of you might have to uh, have some, if it's a bigger proposal, you might have to have some allies in, in, the, in the group. You might have to do your name of first, right? Number four, you might have to 
build your uh, build confidence in others so that when you make your opinion they would listen to you another fourth thing that just came to my mind but it slipped my mind uh, so so there are different ways so there's no one one size fits all answer here uh, and uh, and uh, right the most important thing might be that uh, you have to think about not what you want to you are not going to tell just what they want to listen to but you have to think what matters to them right what matters to their success so if that is again not in a small group discussion but in a, in a bigger proposal and such you have to make sure what matters to them and grab their attention in the first 30 seconds if you do not have somebody's attention you don't grab them in the first 30 seconds you have lost them most probably so first don't go into your technical information and your logic in the first 30 seconds first talk about what matters to them if it's the i didn't No, no. The your sales will tell you some um, way that you can increase your double your sales next year. If you are going to talk to, to uh, you can say, okay, I'm going to make your cash flow. Of you would be uh, familiar with these words, but then I'm going to make your cash flow much better next year. so i'm going to show, show you a way i'm going to propose you something so grab there go to the uh, listener so the audience shows and and think in their shoes uh, making your opinion heard did i answer your question at least to a, to a certain extent uh, yes you did thank you anyone else right i think i have come to the, the last uh, heavy slide so and when you adapt to corporates once you get a job and when you go into a corporate first thing is you can't skip work right we all i'm sure all of us have skipped lectures uh, i wasn't i wasn't very good at uh, getting up and coming to the first lecture mm, hope dr asel is not listening to this but uh, i i wasn't very good at uh, coming to the first lecture for example so so we uh, i'm sure we all have skipped lectures but sorry to tell you you can't continue it with work you can't skip work right that's number one so in adapting this is this is very important so uh, coming to work on time matters and uh, keeping your promises on time you can't skip these things then number two is understanding fit into the culture is important however it doesn't mean that you have to lose yourself you have have to become a different person and you have to lose your values no it doesn't right it might be very small things that you have to to change that doesn't take anything away from you you have to keep a broad mind and and you have to see whether you want want to fit to that culture and how how would you do that without losing your values right and uh, in multinationals to as i told you the, the stupidest person in the us is speaking english so you can right you can learn a language so please learn the language i'm sad to say this but i still see that there are some my batchmates still there are some guys who can't write a sentence in in right english luckily they are not in the corporates but then more, some of them so this is really key guys you can do it it's really easy to to learn a language so so i can't stress enough how important communication is that's why i'm stressing on the language please learn the language if you are not uh, not if you think it's not good at it because to excel in our technical 
learning and i don't know getting your first class second class it was the language wasn't a barrier it wasn't uh, a big barrier you could communicate to your uh, person who's reading your answer script it didn't matter matter much but when you come to cooperate when you come to the the working world it's very important to communicate what you think in the language that the receiver understands right so so i can't stress the enough the, the importance of of being good at language and then another uh, thing that when you adapt into a cooperate it's very important to understand the individuals are very different right so they are coming from diverse backgrounds they are their knowledge level is different their circumstances are different you might be single and all that but then the 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 people uh, working with you would have uh, different priorities you have to understand that you have to respect others and earn your respect right so it's it's important to remember that once you start working and of course sometimes you are not very good at getting the credit for what we do so it is something that uh, that you should you should learn how to get credit so it's not that i'm saying that you have to go and talk about what you did to everyone that you meet in the company but there are subtle ways of uh doing this as well as uh in the performance reviews and such uh you have to to show that what what you have done mm, that's important and next thing is don't shy away from challenges if there are opportunities go ahead and take these challenges right so being shrewd this important but not to be cutthroat right when i say cutthroat it's that uh you would harm someone else or pull somebody else down uh to 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 take credit or to uh to go up you don't have to be that but you have to be shrewd when i'm saying shrewd it's like when there are opportunities how you take these opportunities you want to go join a different project in addition to the job that you do how you do that how you uh, sometimes uh, to have access to the big shots in the company it might this is something that that we forget a lot da, that you have to be friendly with their secretary so their personal assistants i am not saying that you have to to be like overly friendly with them but you have, you might think that these people are just i don't know this they have just passed their o levels and they can speak english uh, i am not going to go to their level and such i am not saying that you it's not that you have to uh, be make them your best buddies right it's not but then you have to respect them uh, they might be the access to they might be the access to big shots so be shrewd in in what you do uh but but don't be be cutthroat and you have to be clear on your priorities and you have to to say for example you might decide no i'm i don't want to become a, a, i don't want to become a big shot i'm okay to be a i'm okay to be the this engineer who's doing only this forever that that's up to you so i i value my charity work more than now uh, this this job i'm doing this job only to to earn so that i can spend it on on my family so there is no so so even i have in my teams i have engineers what they say is uh i'm doing this job uh, when i'm 50 i'm going to retire i'm doing this job uh, because because uh, because i want to earn for my kids but he's doing the job well right whatever he takes on he he delivers really well but he's very clear that he doesn't want to go up in the ladder and such uh, but he wants to deliver what he what he takes on so have your priorities clear in your mind uh, maybe when you go to the first interview it might not be clear uh, however it's something that that you have to you might want to think about so again in a nutshell when you are adapting to cooperates if you forget all this whatever i have in thread is what you can take as 
if you are taking one thing out of this, take this thing out of this, right? There are no right or wrong places or jobs out there in the, in the market, right? There are no right or wrong places and jobs, but there are suitable ones for you for sure. Definitely there are suitable ones for you. Find them and excel in them, right? Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, Pramod. Uh, I have a question about uh, so what uh, I mean uh, uh, as a fresh graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the demand of us? Uh, then I mean one or two year experience person or uh, company. Uh, what is the demand of a fresh graduate uh, to their uh, organization? Right. So, so uh, of course, there's a natural turnover in companies, right? People come in, people retire and all that. So when we want to fill in, fill in, the, fill in the card, of course, there's a naturally, there's a uh, demand created, is one. And uh, that is one way of you getting into, that is how the vacancies are created, is one. And the other thing is, uh, all, always companies like to have kind of new blood in their organization. Because with that new blood, you guys bring more, when there's new recruit, we want to prove ourselves, right? And we have more hunger than somebody who has worked for 10, 20 years and now set in their ways and, and such. So uh, companies, that's another reason for having demand for uh, fresh graduates because, and then you are uh, you are bringing new kind of thinking and you are bringing new energy to the organization rather than people who have been there for so long. And another thing is, I think in engineering it is expected that you would know about newer techs and new ways of solving problems than people who have been in the industry for a long time. So, so, so that's why there's a demand. Uh, so that demand will always be there from home. And the other thing is when the, when the economies grow, of course, there'll be newer companies and the companies also will uh, expand in size and volume. So there'll be uh, vacancies and we might need fresh graduates. Uh, Madam, adding on to that question, so okay. when, we, when we search for, about jobs, I have come across like they require uh, one to three year experiences. However, when we go through the job description, it says it, we can like have some sort of a confidence that we can yes. align with that. Yes. But is that a barrier as a fresh graduate when you are applying to a job? No, just go ahead and apply. Go ahead and apply and be confident and talk about it. And then this is where that I said that you can even uh, challenge saying, okay, hire me, give me a contract for one year, give me a contract for six months. I'll show you show you that I have potential. I can I can do this job, right? Don't make it as the starting statement at the in the interview, but then but then uh, once you like talk about you and then when they explain the job and all that, tell that as. I saw the job role in your advertisement. I'm very confident that I, I can do this job. I can, I can fit into this role and I, I, and I love to do this and why. So even if they're asking for one to two year experience, of course, go ahead and apply for those. Madam, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I think this pandemic situation has affected most of the occupations in the industry. Uh, Thus, uh, sometimes one might have to take the opportunity available in the market uh, in spite of one's passion. So, mm -hmm. uh, how much weight do we have to give to the fact, uh, to the to passion in situations like this? So, uh, because of the pandemic, of course, it might have reduced to a certain extent. Uh, again, it's about 
you taking a job that you don't like to do at all i don't think that's very wise just because the job is there because when you go to the second one right they would of course ask where do you work and what your salary there right and then then it matters so of course according to your priorities um, you might want to jump in on the, the first available opportunity but again think twice about it because when you go to the second one of course they'll ask what was that why why did you do that what did uh, what did uh, excite you in that job why did you to uh, apply for that uh, and and what your salary there was right so uh, it, there's no harm in exploring these opportunities uh, i don't think that uh, pandemic situation has created a uh has a, a big effect in in recruitment that i have not actually seen any more questions uh... so uh just related to the last question that you had you have to be desperate but desperate not to find any job but you have to be desperate to be your best right so there are always suitable careers for you of course explore and don't be afraid to change those careers also so they are out there go grab it and be impactful and most of all be happy right so so that's the the message that i can i can give you there are always suitable jobs go go for them uh, sitila there's one common issue among our graduates these days that's about uh, the sector they are supposed to join at the first okay right so i know that you have been in various uh, uh, industries uh, including software as well so uh, what are the opportunities available in uh, apparel sector now you are leading a research team or kind of r and d team and mostly involved with uh, some innovative uh, work so what kind of uh, opportunities available with apparel sector at the moment uh, for especially manufacturing and industrial engineers so in apparel sector uh, if it's uh, for engineers of course it's there's a wide variety of uh, roles being in manufacturing being in uh, automation and and of course as you said when you say software it might not be coding and such but uh, uh, we are looking at kind of application consultants like to find out the need and marry it with uh, the the software solutions so, so it's kind of like digitization kind of space and of course in r and d space as well innovation space as well so there are a wide variety of jobs and of course if you look at uh, uh, aseli you might remember inoka yeah yeah so so inoka is not even in an engineering job but she is the, she is also director in another sister company mm -hmm. she is handling a 100 million dollar sales portfolio mm -hmm. so they are kind of there are some are fashion garments some are technical garments but uh, but uh, she has moved into a to a role where the the Uh, engineering education the fundamentals and problem solving ability has helped her a lot in her role mm -hmm. so it's it's actually up to you uh, to so for example for engineers there are product development kind of roles as well it's like when you say product development it's like incremental innovations in in products yeah. so uh, it's it's very wide mm -hmm. and of course in sustainability sustainability uh, teams as well there are uh, opportunities mm -hmm. 
and of course as in, in industrial engineering. Yeah. Are there any questions? Because Sitila has already taken two hours. I think she's a, a retired person by now because she's. We started. We had a, a strategy offsite today. Uh -huh. We can't go offsite, so it was in the office. So we were uh, working from eight thirty today. I see. Okay. So if you have any quick questions, I think uh, you can post it. Otherwise, we will uh, wrap up the session. Any questions? Okay. So if not, uh, then uh, I think we can wrap up the session. So thank you very much, Sitila, again, taking your valuable time uh, to enlighten our graduates on uh, the career prospects and then how to handle the initial uh, stages of their careers, early stage of their careers, and hope that uh, they got a lot of uh, out of your experience sharing session as well as some of the advices you gave from various uh, industries where you worked. And uh, I hope they will uh, 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 take these things into account when they are uh, applying for the jobs and then when they are starting their new career, especially how to face the interview and how to uh, handle the tough uh, situations that they have to face when they are especially uh, preparing for themselves to um, uh, for the uh, first job, right? So uh, thank you very much. So I am uh, really appreciate your services uh, to the department, especially as being a IAB member and even helping us in whenever the opportunities you get. So thank you very much. Uh, just to wind up the session, I would like to invite uh, Rajiv to propose what of thanks. Rajiv. I said uh, just, uh, just before Rajiv comes in, thank you very much for the opportunity and it was a, it was a pleasure uh, talking to it, everyone. And of course, uh, you can share my email address with, uh, with everyone so that if there are other questions that they want to talk about, they can they can connect later. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Rajiv. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, Sitila, I just wanted to uh, you know uh, thank you on behalf of everyone uh, for your time and for the really interesting session. And uh, also, you know, as always, it's 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 always great to have someone from our department itself, someone who has roots uh, in the University of Peradeniya and uh, even more, someone who has roots in our own department. Uh, we somehow find these webinars and sessions more uh, effective, probably because uh, you, uh, you know, you, I, I guess you can relate to us and we can relate to um, what, you've been, what you've gone through at uh, university. So, uh, and, and that being said, I think uh, this is also a very timely topic for most of us. I think we have a lot of uh, final year students here and we are on the verge of uh, ending our career at the university and uh, very soon we'll be, uh, you know, entering the corporate world. And, and as you rightly said, you know, we are, we are quite desperate uh, for jobs and uh, it's very stressful. But uh, like you said, you know, it's, 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 not, uh, it's about being desperate for the right job, uh, not being desperate for any job. So again, uh, and also I think most of what we learn today aren't uh, things that we can learn off the internet or, or things that we can read off a book. Uh, most of it is, uh, you know, I think thanks to your experience. And uh, I think, uh, so I think it was very, very, uh, very, very important. And uh, so, yeah, thanks again. Thanks for, oh, thanks for all of that. And uh, so, yeah, on behalf of everyone present here and on behalf of uh, the Department of Manufacturing and Industrial Engineering, uh, thank you. And uh, we really hope to hear from you again. Uh, because, like I said, uh, we, we we tend to relate to you uh, more than um, uh, like you know people from uh, other universities or you know other other areas of expertise. So uh, yeah, with that, uh, I hope you all the very best in the amazing work that you're doing at MS. And um, so yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate that, Rajiv. Thank you, and wish you wish you guys all the best. Uh, do connect, uh, do uh, contact me if you have any more questions, if you want to understand different things. Uh, it's always uh, it's always a pleasure to, to talk to you guys. Okay, then have a good night. Good night, thank Wish you. Wish you all the best.